Hashem, Baruch Hashem, so happy to be here in this holy place, in the place that Hashem chose for us to, to speak and to reveal the will of Hashem from this place. That's our new Emuna Center in New York, in Queens. And uh, it's good, the Queen, she's happy. Shechina Gdosha, she's with us. Shechina Gdosha Betochenu, inside of us. And um, we came in peace. And that's our will. To express the will of Hashem in Bach in the world. And to bring as many people as we can to understand the will of Hashem. And to try to find the way to serve Him with a smile with love, with pure intention. For people, it's very hard to find the way to serve Hashem in Barach by themselves because people are innocent, simple, tmimim, naive. When people want to find Hashem, so they go, when they ask, they consult with people that are already in Avodat Hashem, people that are religious, people that are serving Hashem in Barach already. And now, because they're coming from, from a background that might be secular, that, that don't contain the wisdom and the knowledge of the religious world, so... Whatever they're going to learn, they're going to believe. And then they're following blind eyes, blinded, not being able even to think because they're so excited and thirsty. Oh, yes, and whatever, whatever you're going to guide me, I'm going to do, I'm going to keep, without paying attention to the fact that maybe the people that are guiding them are not really qualified to give those guidings and to give the advice and, 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 and to provide the message that is really pure and right for those souls. Because souls, people that are coming from far, are usually very fragile, very, very sensitive, very, very delicate, very, very gentle, coming from places that are people that have been hurt, a lot, people that have been crushed a lot, been tested a lot, people that finally found some courage in life and, and decided to make a change and to do it and to go all the way and like now they're like uh, little chicks, and so sensitive, so fragile, so like in a minute they can lose their way and, and, and go back to darkness and the souls of those Baalet Shuvah that are falling off the derech, that are not holding on, the sorrow of their disappointment, of their sadness, of their sorrow after reaching to the light in a way and then realizing that it was wrong, that it wasn't the right path, it wasn't the right way. It's very frustrating for them, for those souls. And this is why people that are choosing to lead and to, and, and to give guidings and to support and to be there for those souls that are seeking for the truth must realize the weight, the responsibility that's on their back, on their shoulders. And that's why to become a Rebbe, to be a teacher, you need to be one of two. Or a very holy man means that your intentions must be very, very pure. And you must really be ready to do everything for Hashem's honor and to throw yourself and to rescue your st students from, from their troubles. And, or that you need to be sick in your mind and just to be crazy that don't know what he's doing and just like, okay, shooting all over the place and killing people, like destroying everyone and, and embarrassing people and, and, and hurting souls that are so fragile, that are so sensitive. And it's so wrong, and it's so, so... You're playing with fire, so fire can 
give you warmth and, 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 and life and also can kill. So we are coming from that side of those broken souls that for years were looking for some guidance, for some salvation, for any lifeline. Every, every opportunity that we had to, to connect ourselves to the light and to, to learn Torah and to be, sit between the wise people and every place that we heard that is holy, we went to that place and, and, and we tried, so, and we've been burnt. In, in most of our, uh, <laughs> in most of our, uh, in most of the tri times that we tried, we failed, and we found out that that's not the right way for me. Okay, so I'll try something else, and maybe that will be the right way. And again, you fell on your face, and you, again you disappointed, and again you realize that it's not the right place for me. And Many, many Baal and Shuva are finding themselves losing their connection to Hashem, to the Creator, during that process of Shuva. So, as people that carry those scars on their skin and saw what can happen, me and my friends, all of the people that are giving a hand and supporting and helping this amazing Muna project, are standing in this uh, position because that we realize how important it is to save the souls of those ones that are seeking for Hashem. When you have two people that are standing in front of you, you cannot say who is more important, with who to deal with, who to help to, with, with with who to start, everyone can be very holy, everyone's intention can be very pure, but who are you really going to reach out to first? So first of all, that's what I came up with, first of all you need to help the ones that are asking for help. You're not going to start go and chase after people that are running away from you. It's a waste of time. Like, you have people that are facing you, people that are calling you, people that are asking, so you're going to provide the message first to them. They, they ask for it. So, and today we can see how the circles are expanding and how many, many new people we meet every day and how friends are bringing their friends into, into this amazing world of faith. And it's not like you need to look for students. If you're just going to decide to open your mouth and to smile, you're going to see that people will just gonna flow to, into your arms, will just ask you, can you tell me, Rabbi, Rabbi, how many of, of us heard that, like, just, just be my Rabbi, just teach me, can, can you be my Rabbi, can, you, can I ask you a question, and like, immediately they're going to ask you all of their halachi questions, that, and you yourself don't know the answer, but you already have students. And that's something that Hashem Barach is doing to us that we cannot ignore. The, the numbers of people that are searching and seeking for the truth is growing. And it's growing enormously, in huge numbers. And we just need to become more and more available as much as we can to those people. And this is why we're opening centers around the world in many places as we can. And that's why mainly we're working online with internet and social media and Facebook and YouTube and SoundCloud and Twitter and you know more than better than I, <laughs> WhatsApp and broadcasts and, and, and every, every outlet that exists we're using. And if we learn that there is something else that you can do, immediately we're investigating and learning how to. And, because there are people in the other side of the line that that's their line, that's their bridge, that's their way to connect to you. There is no other way to unite the world today except off through social media. There is no other way in the world to do that. Welcome. There is no other way in the world that we will connect other people through the phone. You cannot reach to the same number of people through the mail, you cannot drive every place, try to give class, it's, 
if it won't be online, when, when I'm coming to places and I give classes, so sometimes there are only 10 people, 15 people, and the, the, like, the, the people that organize the class, they feel bad with themselves. Oh, we thought we're going to have 30 people, we thought we're going to have 50 people, and we're telling them, listen, we don't care, look at the phone, and we're showing them the phone that that class was video live on Facebook, and in the end of the class, it's already close to 1,000 1, views like 700, 800, and in a couple of hours it's going to be like so many other people and then we're uploading it to YouTube and then we're sending it and emailing it and, 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 and you have thousands and thousands of people that receive that message and those people are exactly like us and we must remember that. I remember myself in the beginning of my tshuva, I didn't know how to open books, I didn't know how to call a rabbi, I, I, I was like completely ignorant in, in all of the religion aspect of life. I didn't know. The only thing that you can do today when you want to know something is to Google it. The numbers of students that I have that found me through Rabbi Google, I think that Rabbi Google is one of the only rabbis that are not arguing with me, never. Like, he's, uh, he understands me. He doesn't have no problems with my attitude. He likes my message. <laughs> it's, it's great. He likes it. If the world likes it, he likes it. He doesn't care. Google supports you when you're good. Google is a fan of yours. So, when you understand that all of this system been created just for us, just that we will provide the pure and holy message that Hashem Barach wants for His people, for the truth seekers around the world, People from Kazakhstan, from Colombia, from India, from Brazil, from Nicaragua, from Bombay in, 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 in India. People are reaching out to us from Jordan. So we have students in Saudi Arabia and in Iran. People that are emailing to us now to the US and they're saying now we can be in touch with you because when you were in Israel we couldn't be in touch with you because People are checking online if, 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 like, if someone communicated to Israel, so that's it. So they're going to find him. The government over there is going to find him. It's crazy. And now they're free and they can be in touch with us. It's crazy. And numbers of stories of, of people that, that just search for the truth and they're writing the words truth and faith and emunah and something. And I got to your classes and I was searching for something and I got to your classes and I heard your lecture about this and your lecture about that and we're open-minded and we all need to be open-minded and the truth is that I know it about my students that we're all open-minded it's not that I'm all, that I am open-minded and you're learning it from me you came to me because you are open-minded you hear my message because my message is talking to you a friend of mine told me after one of the classes, I felt like you were saying my own thoughts. I told him, and if you're going to ask all the rest of the people that were with you in class, they will all tell you the same. So how can it be? I'll answer you. Because there is only one truth. And I'm also saying it. But you're also thinking it. I'm, also, I'm, I'm brave to say it. But you are also thinking it. When you're thinking the truth, so... That's the truth. And I'm just speaking it. And then you find it relate to you. But the truth is only one. And that's the secret. And the only thing that will make that truth be revealed to the world if, is if more and more people will be brave enough to express their thoughts and to talk. I met a person during last Shabbat. He came to the house that were hosting us, and we were talking about some like words of Torah and stuff. And that person asked me a question, and I answered to him. And in the end of my answer, that I thought that was very wise answer, and, and really answered the question, he told me, you know, I think you're wrong. And then he started answering instead. And when he finished saying his things, I told him, I think you're right. I didn't have a problem with it, and he was so surprised. Maybe it's the first time in his life that he saw a rabbi that agreed with him instead of <laughs> arguing with him. So the gift is that I'm not a rabbi. I'm just like you. I just like it was very cheap to buy that jacket, <laughs> and it cost less to leave the beard and not shave it and not cut it. So yeah, I'm flowing. 
I'm not a rabbi. I'm a friend. I'm a person that is doing exactly what that you're doing. I'm searching for the truth. And I'm just, I lost my mind already from keeping the truth quiet and being sad and upset and frustrated and can't understand and then banging the head to the wall and, and, and suffering and stop. Stop with those humiliations. Stop with, with all the lies. Stop with all of, of, of to, to be such a hypocrite and, 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 and not to be honest. And a friend of mine told me, how can it be that in the, in the, in the from world, so the shivot, the shivish world, is, is, is not functioning right? Maybe you do still have nice places, but most of the places are not perfect. Things are not going on so well in the yeshiva world. So how come everyone are trying all of the time to praise this, this system instead of fixing it? Instead of taking responsibility on it and rebuild it and restructure it and bring good teachers into the systems and, and, and to check from head to toe, from A to Z, from the beginning till the end, how to fix those systems that they will work right with children of our generation. Instead of that, you're going to kick all of the kids that are not functioning well, and you're going to make it a smaller school, and you're going to charge more tuition every year, and going to make it more expensive, and, and if someone will be problematic, immediately you're going to kick him out from school to keep the school functioning appropriate. Instead of being a place that is able to host, and to bring, and to hug, and to supply, what it really is needed for the children of, of, of all, 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 all of the believers, of all people that are searching for the truth, for children of Israel, for, for, for all the people that are seeking for the truth. What's the problem to work on yourself? What's the problem to admit that you're wrong? And that is the secret of, of the tshuva. When the person is still far from Hashem, and this is why this message is coming out from the mouths of the Baalei Tshuva, that they are usually the ones that are that they have problems. It's not that they are the only ones that have problems. They are the ones that, when they were children, they've been educated not to shut up, not to close their mouths. So now, when they're in the from world, in the religious world, so. In the first year, second year, they will try to be quiet and to cooperate, but after five years, after ten years, suddenly it's too much for them. They feel they lost their freedom, they feel they lost their ability to express themselves, to be who that they are. And that's not the will of Hashem. That's maybe the will of certain communica- uh, communities that are trying to, to make everyone like surrender and, and quiet and, and pressed under the, the, the system and the rules that have been set for that community. But who is saying that that's the will of Hashem? What's the will of Hashem? Like I told you before, I'm saying the truth and you think the same. So that's a proof for the truth. The truth is what? If now I'm going to tell you the truth and you will, I'll tell you now the truth and you will feel that I'm saying something wrong, you're not supposed to follow me. You're not supposed to follow everything that I will define as the truth. You need to follow the real truth. And the real truth will be recognized by you because it's written that divrei emet nikarim, that words of truth are words that you recognize. They sound familiar. Where from? From the roots of your soul. Because you, in the bottom of your heart, in the roots of your soul, connected in 100% to Hashem, to the creator of the world. He gave you a godly soul, a soul that created in heaven, a soul that made out of Him. Chelek Eloka Mimal, part of God from above, from heaven. And when you hear the truth, it sounds familiar. That's why you recognize. That's why in the future to come, when Hashem will expose Himself and show Himself to the world, so the righteous ones, means the ones that were close to Him, also in this world, they will be able to recognize Him and to say, Ze Hashem kivinu lo. That is Hashem that we were hoping for. That, and not that. That, the one that we recognize. How you say that? Ze Hashem kivinu lo. 
It's the first time we see him. Now is the first time that Hashem is uncovering himself and showing himself to the world. So how can you say that is him? Because they already recognized him in this world. Because they were 100% connected to their souls. So they felt him. They felt him in certain situations, in certain verses, in certain parts of the Torah. They, they met him in life, in real life. They found him already. And now when he revealed himself, so now it's familiar for them. That's what that happens with us when we're learning the truth. When we hear words of truth. So those words of truth are usually coming from the mouths of Bale Tshuva, of people that are waking from zero, from complete darkness, and they recognize the light mainly because that they came from such thick darkness. Because when you're in darkness, every small light is, is clear for you. You can put your finger on it. Why? Because it's so dark. It's so obvious that that is the truth. But if you live your life in the day, and it's all illuminating, and you're from, from birth, and all the verses are in front of your face, and people are, are quoting sources and, and, and ho from holy books all of the time. So for you to recognize the truth between one book to the other or between one rabbi to the next, it will be very hard. Because they're both reading from the same book. They're both quoting the same source. And one is holy and pure and one is evil and selfish. So how are you going to define between good and mad? It's very good and mad. It's, it's a very thin line. It's very, very thin. And only people that already got a heart, that they're very connected to the truth, they will define between the good and the bad also in those illuminating places, also when it's twilight zone, also in the gray areas. So for that, we are coming. Those people that can sense the truth and we're trying to reveal it to the people that finding it a little bit hard to recognize. But we're not bringing anything new. We're just waking up your confidence to search for the truth on your own. And this is why I said before that all of the people that are joining us, joining the Amuna Project, they're joining us because they're related to the same experience that we are. They also try to join a certain system. They also try to send their children to the religious school. They also try to become Dati, religion, and, and they wanted to serve, and they found that something is missing. That the voice of truth is, is a little bit low, and you need to wake up some, some, some honesty, some sensitivity, some kindness, and to bring it up to the surface. And that's our mission. Our mission is to help other people to complete their tshuva, to help them to come back to Hashem. And not to make them religious. That's not our purpose. We're not trying to make Baalet Shuvah like you're going to say, oh, like a woman came to me a few weeks ago and she said, my son is a Baal Tshuva. So I was laughing immediately. And she said, why are you laughing? I said, what do you mean he's a Baal Tshuva? So she said, he's keeping Shabbat. He's putting tefillin every morning. So I said, okay, that's why I'm laughing. She said, what? He's a Baal Tshuva. I told her, no, he's Dati. He's religion. He's religious. You're right. He is religious and it's good. I don't have a problem with a person that is religious. But to say on a person that is a Baal Tshuva, that's something else. If you have a kippah, so you own a kippah. If you put tefillin, so you own tefillin. If you wake up in the morning, every morning, and you pray in a minion, so you are a, a, a person that prays. You own the prayer. Great, you're praying. Wonderful. Every mitzvah, if you bought it, if you achieved it, and you keep it, so you own it. It's yours. Great. But to be a Baal Tshuva, for that you need to do Tshuva. To do Tshuva, it means to confess on your sins. When you put a kippah on your head, so you own a kippah. You're not a Baal Tshuva. You don't own the Tshuva. Tshuva is a different mitzvah. Tshuva is to come back to Hashem every time you walked away from Him. Every time you sin, you need to confess on that. Every time that you messed up, you need to talk about it with Hashem. Every time you were wrong and you were doing something in a, in a dark way, in a, in a bitter way, in a sad way, in an angry and upset way, so you need to do tshuva on that and to come back to Hashem. 
If you hate your wife for not keeping Torah, so you hate your wife, and the fact that you're angry at her that she's not learning or not covering herself or not whatever, is not justifying your anger. You need to say to Hashem, thank you that I want to serve you. I'm sorry that I was angry at my wife. You're not allowed to be upset. You're not allowed to be angry. You're not allowed to hate, that's for sure. And if you hate people because they're not religious, something is sick with you. Something is very, very sick with you. If you would really be connected to Hashem, to the Father of Mercy, you would love all of His creations. Like that it's written on him, that his mercy and his love is on all of his creations. When you hate someone, when you despite someone, when you're angry at someone, you don't have mercy on him in that moment. So you are divided from the Creator in that time. And also on top of that, it's written that everyone that is angry, call a coerce, call me nege nom shaltimbo, all kinds of hell controls that person. You're possessed with demons when you're angry. You're not allowed to be. You're not allowed to give permission to demons to control over you when, when you feel like it. You know? That's not the way to serve Hashem. So when you're angry, you're not serving Hashem. When you're sad and depressed and broken, you're not serving Hashem. Rabbi Nachman of Weslev asked, Do you know what's the meaning of sadness? And he answered, That you're angry at Hashem Itbarach, at the Creator, for not fulfilling your will. He's not doing what you want him to do, and now you're sad. You are angry, and now you're going down. And you decided that. Why? Because he's not doing what you want him to do. Who is working for who? Who is serving who? So you lost your mind in a way, and it's okay. If you realize that, you're, that you lost your mind, that you're sick, so it's okay, you're going to go to the doctor, you're going to go to a righteous man, and you're going to open the books, and, and you're going to find the, the cure. You're going you're gonna to work on yourself, and you're going to be okay. But if you're denying your sickness, and you're justifying your angers, and you try to build huge systems that will work on, on being strict, and hard, and vicious, and cruel, and, and, and crazy, so you're just taking your boat away, you're sailing away from Hashem. That's what you do, basically. You're just uprooting yourself from purity and, and you're planting yourself in foreign places, in dark places, in awful places. And that's not right. That's not good. That's not healthy. And your students are begging you to stop. And we might be your students, so that's why we're asking. Please stop. Just go find another job. Do something useful in your life and, and stop hurting souls, stop hurting people that are seeking for the truth. And I'll tell you the secret of tshuva, how really a person can do tshuva and what it means. Because we said, okay, to become religious, that's not tshuva. It's to become religious and it's good and it's great because we are obligated to keep all Torah and mitzvot. I learned it already that whatever I say, I need to explain. Because when I say something and I'm not explaining, so then people are drifting. People are like they're, they're using their wings to disappear and to go somewhere else and they're losing connection. So I'll explain. Yes, you should keep to all mitzvot, all tariyag mitzvot. Don't worry, you are keeping Shabbat. I'm keeping Shabbat. I'm eating kosher. Everything is good. Tarata Mishpacha, your wife needs to go to the mikveh, everything is good, don't drive in Shabbat, everything relax and calm. Yeah, cool, great. We clarified it, it's clear, great, thank you. Now we can move on. Wonderful. So now, it's not a joke. It's so sad that we need to talk about those nonsense because it's obvious. Because if you wouldn't keep Shabbat, we wouldn't grow the beard, and if you wouldn't eat kosher, we wouldn't have peot, and if you wouldn't believe in the Torah, and the Chumash, and the Torah Shebaal Peh, and all the Mephoshim, and if you wouldn't learn 12 years in Yeshiva, we wouldn't do all of this. We would go hiking or bungee jumping somewhere else in the world. We wouldn't take off our tattoos and serving Hashem, and wearing tzitzit, and going to Uman, and going every morning to the Mikveh, and putting tefillin, Rashi, and Rabbeinu Tam, so like, to suspect us on something that is not kosher, it's uh, like, it's very silly, okay? But, like we said, not everyone are wise, not everyone 
are healthy and their minds to understand a person's opinion and a person's way of thinking. So not everyone can understand who he is, so he needs to present himself. So I'm keeping Shabbat and I'm eating kosher and my kids are learning Torah and when they become Bar Mitzvah they're putting Rashi and Rabbi Dutam Tfilin and everything is cool. Okay? Great. If I'll tell it three times it will be Chazakai and then it will be sure that everyone got the message? Okay. So, the real tshuva. What's the meaning of the real tshuva? The meaning of the real tshuva is to come back to Hashem. What is happening in the world when a person is sinning? When a person is violating one of the rules of the Torah and he's drifted and he went away. What's happening to him? So he, that person that sinned, falls into a world of imagination. Husks are surrounding him and he cannot recognize the light of the Creator anymore. Not completely, just one sin after the other is blocking the light of faith from his eyes. And if he is a very strong sinner, a very dark person, that filled himself completely so he can almost barely see the light, nothing. Talk to him about the Torah, he doesn't care. Tell him about Shabbat, he doesn't want to. Tell him about Kashrut, he can't stand the thought of not eating bacon and, and shrimps. He can, no, it's not an option. Why? Because he lost his connection to reality. And now he feels only the desires and lusts and temptations of this world. But when a person is doing tshuva, coming back to Hashem, so what basically he needs to do? He needs to take those sins and to confess on them, right? Like we said before, tshuva, it's confessions. It's conversations with Hashem about your sins, about your mistakes. So now, imagine to yourself that you, with your sin, you created a certain mask, a certain husk that is blocking the light from your eyes from seeing Hashem and you take that sin and you just break it to pieces with Hashem. You're just bringing it back to Hashem and you're removing it from blocking the light from your eyes and you're bringing it back to Hashem. You're taking that sin and you confess, you explain to Hashem, Hashem, you see I violated Shabbos, Hashem. I was talking Lashon Ra. I was Mutsi Shem Ra on a person. I was doing, telling bad things on a person. Okay, now you take that sin that you made and you explain it and apologize on it and express your regret on it. And by doing that, you're melting it. You're breaking that husk, that physical part of darkness that is blocking the light of Hashem from you won't have no existence anymore. Hi, welcome. Maybe for you we're going to explain it again. <laughs> Soon. So you took that brick that was blocking the light of Hashem from your eyes and you removed it and you uplift it by fixing it during doing tshuva, while you were doing tshuva. You confess to Hashem and you remove that. So, the result is that now after doing tshuva on that specific sin that you sinned, you removed it and now you came back to Hashem. You can see Hashem. That's the meaning of the word tshuva. Now the light of Hashem is shining again on you and that sin is not blocking the light of Hashem from you anymore. Now, when a person has not completed his tshuva yet, he's still a sinner, he's still sinning, so what will he see in front of his eyes? His sins, right? Like we said, every sin creates a curtain, a husk that is blocking the light. So when you look at your life, what you see? You see the sins. You barely can see the light of Hashem, and mainly you see those blockings, those coverings that you created for yourself from those sins, right? Now, that is the situation of a person that is chasing himself and blaming himself. A person that hates himself, that blames himself all of the time, is a person that sees his sins in front of his eyes all of the time. 
Why? Because you have not completed your tshuva yet. But if you're going to do tshuva on that, you're going to remove it. And you're going to do tshuva on that as well, you're going to remove that as well. And now you're going to complete your tshuva and you will not going to see no more lackings in you. You're just going to see the light of Hashem. And then you will be happy. And then you won't care from your sins because they won't be in your way anymore. And your connection to Hashem will be straight and up, open. And you and Him will be one because there will be no separations anymore. So when you want to reconnect yourself to Hashem, there is only one thing you can do that calls tshuva. And tshuva is not to be religious. Tshuva is to come back to Hashem. How you come back to Hashem? You confess on your mistakes, on your sins, on your abonaut. You woke up late this morning, you feel that it was wrong, you go to Hashem and you tell Him, listen, it was wrong, I feel that it was wrong. You didn't eat kasher this day, you did something wrong, you violated Shabbos, you heard something, Lashon Ara, you were talking Lashon Ara, you were Mutsi Lashem Ra, you were talking about someone, I don't know, you did something off or something wrong, you, you, you were not honest, you lied, you cheated, you, you stolen money, you did something wrong, you take that, block that you created, that thick husk that you created with your sin, and you just break it to pieces. How you do that? With your confessions. I'm going to explain to you, if you want, a little bit in a deeper way how you do that. Everything in this world contains a code. Who gave that code? Who created that code? The Creator Himself. When He created the world, He used the Holy Language. The Holy Language. And with those holy letters, he created the world. And there are verses that while using those verses, Hashem Yitbarach created the world. And those verses are combinations of certain letters. When you want to create light, or, so you have Aleph and Vav and Resh, and that combination creates light. And when you want to create earth, so you have the word Adama. Adama, you write Aleph and Dalet and Mem and Hey. That combination creates earth. It's very deep. It's much more complex and a lot of Kabbalah involves in it. There are many combinations, many, many holy names of Hashem inside. But still, when Hashem created certain things, so in everything, He put that code that built that thing like DNA, just in letters. The wisdom of creation is the wisdom of the Creator to express His will in words. So now, that's how you create the world. So there are verses now in the Bible, in the Torah, that are telling us how to keep a mitzvah. And that's the code of how to fix and to give life to those sections of the world that we're in charge on. And there are other verses that are explaining the sin, how a person is violating and breaking the healthy way of the creation and destroying and ruining the creation. And there is a code for that as well. So now when a person is sinning, he's twisting the first code and replacing it with a broken one. Now, when the person is doing tshuva, how you do tshuva? You talk to Hashem, right? You pray. So, if you want to do tshuva, let's say, on money. So, you're going to do, you're going to make prayers, you're going to confess on money, right? Because you want to talk about money. So, you're going to use the combinations that will fix the sin itself. If you're going to use now in your prayers confessions and you're going to bring the word kesef, money, into those prayers, it's going to fix the code. So if a person now, for an example, he needs money, he will go and say, please Hashem, I need money, please Hashem, support my family. Those prayers are the vessels to contain the bounty that cause money, that cause shefa. Because you ask for shefa, because you asked for money. So those are the vessels that you built. And now when you want to break your bad, negative combinations that you created, you're going to confess and going to pray 
Sorry, Hashem, that I was stealing money, that I desired something that was not belong to me. And by saying those words with those combinations of the letters, you're going to fix the code. Hashem is so huge and so great and so beyond us that He puts words in our prayer that will be the right words to use to fix what that we ruined and broke while sinning. And He will help you only when you will talk from the heart. Because only when you will talk from the heart, you're really going to express what that only you and Hashem knows that you did. If you will feel really the sorrow of your sins, and you're going to really regret on what that you did, you will confess in the most precise way on the things that you actually did. If you just want to tell a friend that you did something wrong and you don't really want him to know with who and what and what actually happened and what took place and where and when, so you're going to say something general. If you're going to confess like that to Hashem, it's going to bring some healing, like that some understanding that your friend will have about what that you did. But if, chas shalom, you will feel horrible with yourself and you will want to confess to your specific friend that you hurt him, so you're going to remind him exactly the day and where you were and what you were doing and what he was thinking, because you will want him to know exactly what happened. So you're going to tell the bottom line of the truth to him. And then, if he will be kind and nice and able to forgive, so he will forgive you completely because you opened your heart completely to Him. If you're just going to tell Him, listen, I'm sorry, I hurt you, He say, okay, but the truth is that He cannot forgive you completely because you haven't confessed completely. But when you're going to complete your confession, so that's it. You've been answered already. So that's the will of Hashem, that we will come back to Him like that. That we will be specific and precise to the point to tell Him the truth, Hashem. If now, for an example, you're not praying, you can't pray. So Hashem doesn't want you to come to Him and tell Him, listen, Hashem, I can't pray. That's not a confession. Hashem wants to hear the truth. Why can't you pray? What's so hard for you with the prayer? Say the truth. Say, I don't feel like it. I feel that it's like it's dead, it's dry for me. I don't feel no desire to do it. It's boring. I don't understand the language. I, I can't feel the, 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 no passion while doing it. Please, Hashem, help me. I don't want to sin. I don't want not to pray. I want to do it. I want to do good. But I can't feel no, 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 no connection to the prayer. Can you help me? If you said the truth and that's your bottom line, you will be answered. Because Hashem is close to everyone that will call Him with truth. And He will help you to heal your mistakes. To fix that code that's been broken by our sins. A person can call me and tell me stories like I'm, I'm receiving those phone calls on a daily basis from people that are basically losing their minds. And I'm asking them, say the truth. Why you suffer? And people are expressing their sorrow and their disappointment from Hashem. And they feel, today a woman spoke with me and she told me, I, in, she, in the beginning of the conversation, since she was very calm, she was strong, she was still able to present herself and to tell me that there is much more to say, and she, like she tried to hold on and, and, and to be strong. But after 15, 20 minutes of conversation, that's it. She, she spilt it all. She couldn't hold on anymore. And she started crying. And she said, I'm going with the same feeling for more than 30 years of my life. I'm praying and praying and praying, and I'm not being answered. I feel that Hashem don't care about my prayers. So now, what are you going to do about that? So she heard that she's a, a, a stubborn woman, and that she's a, a refusing woman, Isha Salvanit, and one, 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 thousands of compliments she received from her husband, from his rabbis, from everyone that's around her. She's bad, she's evil, she's not humble, she's not whatever. You're talking to a person that wants to serve Hashem in Barach from age five, desire to do Hashem's will, and whatever she prays for, Hashem is breaking for her. Whatever she wants, Hashem is destroying. So now, 
How you deal with those situations? I'll tell you what I did. I told them, you're right. And I'm on your side. And I'm going to fight with Hashem for you. It's my problem now. It's not yours anymore. I'll take care of you. I'll help you. I'll pray for you. I'll do whatever it takes to bring Hashem in Barach to hear and to accept your prayers. Because I felt the honesty. She told me, you're the first rabbi that ever answered to me like that. I told her, because I'm not a rabbi. I'm your friend. I'm your brother. I'm not your rabbi. I don't need to keep my position. I don't need to obey to no one. I'm not working for no one. I'm serving Hashem, and I know that Hashem Barach He wants those people to be answered. And yes, there are reasons why Hashem Barach is not answering their prayers yet. I know that also for me, it took years and years to achieve certain things. And there are things that I was praying for them that I haven't received yet. But I'm confident that I will. Why? Because I saw that certain things I received. And I saw the certain prayers being accepted. And I saw wonders and miracles. So it gives me the strength to continue and not to back off. And not only to continue on my own, also to give that strength and power to other people. And to make them also strong and brave to decide, we're not going to back off. We're going to continue. We're not going to give up. We're not going to fall to no sadness, to no despair. And that's the secret of the people that wants to serve Hashem in Barach and not, a, not willing to receive no reward for that. Not searching for no reward. Not looking for honor. Not looking for respect. Not looking for money. Those are the people that are ready to sacrifice themselves for their public, for their people. Ready to stand between Hashem to their people. Like that Moshe Rabbeinu was standing between Hashem to his people. Hashem saved Am Israel from Egypt. So let's now listen to the voice of Hashem. But when Hashem is saying to Moshe, I'm about to kill them all because they made me upset, Moshe Rabbeinu is saying, you need to kill me first. You cannot do that. You have to forgive them. No matter what they did, forgive them. They didn't mean that. You turned their, back, their heart away from you. You turned their face away from you. Moshe is arguing with Hashem. Hey, Moshe, what happened? You're so humble two minutes ago. Why, why now you're fighting, arguing? No, he knows the real will of Hashem. The father, even when he is aim, threatening that he's going to punish his children, that's not his will. And in the end, if he will punish his children now, it doesn't mean that that's what he wanted to achieve. Sometimes even the greatest king finds himself that he doesn't have a choice, that he doesn't see another way. And the Gemara is testifying to Hashem Barach that the Creator Himself, He finds Himself every day for a certain time in the day that He's upset. So we need to try to see how to cancel those judgments and how to bring it to complete mercy. That the mercy of Hashem will be revealed in the world and not the judgments and not the laws and, and the anger of Hashem. Just only the mercy, and only the kindness, and only the love, and only the peace. And that's our mission. And to succeed in that mission, we have to, if we want to succeed in that mission, we have to believe in ourselves. Like Moshe. Moshe believed in himself, and he went and did some things. He went and he broke the holy tablets, and you're not allowed to break the holy tablets. And Eliyahu Navi, the prophet Elijah, he went and he built an altar in a time that it was not allowed by the Bible, by the rules of the Torah, to build an altar outside of Jerusalem. And he went and did it in Mount Carmel in front of thousands of people. Hey, Eliyahu, what are you doing? He knows the real will of Hashem, that there are times that you need to violate some rules because you want to keep the Torah. And not because you want to violate the rules. The last thing in the world that he wants is to violate the rules. But sometimes, if you see a person that is about to jump from the cliff, you don't have time to run for Mincha, because there is a person that is about to jump. So you skip your Mincha instead that he will skip from the bridge. And you sacrifice yourself for your people, for your nation. Because you care. And you care also about Mincha, but you cannot compare life of a person to Mincha. 
You cannot compare life of a person even to Shabbat. And we're keeping Shabbat, every Shabbat, and we're eating kosher, and we're trying as much as we can to drink only Chalav Israel. but my wife's husband is not a Talmid Chacham, so what that Rav Moshe Feinstein said, that the family of a Talmid Chacham, it's better for them to drink only Chalav Israel. that obligation is not on us, because I'm not a Talmid Chacham. I'm not. I'm a very nice person, but Rav Moshe Feinstein was not talking about nice people. He was talking about a Talmid Chacham and his wife. So my wife, she's lucky. Her husband is not a Talmid Chacham. Like I said, women, when they're getting married, they're not getting married because they want to marry a Talmid Chacham. They marry because they want to find their husbands. She wants to find her husband. And she heard that the Talmid Chacham is his good husband. Okay, so she's looking for a Talmid Chacham. She doesn't know what she's asking. If really she would know who she's marrying with, maybe she wouldn't marry him. And not because that he's a Talmid Chacham, so-called, because he's selfish. If he would be a real Talmid Chacham, so great. It's amazing. Also, a very gentle and nice and humble person and clean and generous and got time and he's a loving person and he cares about everyone and he's so righteous that the Gemara is calling him a Talmid Chacham. Wow, I would marry him if I could. But we're not marrying men, we're marrying only women, and I'm married to one woman where we're not getting married with many women, it's not allowed, we're holding the cherem of Rabbeinu Gershom, don't worry, all the rules, all the halachot, kalakim v'chamura, we're trying, we're doing the best that we can, we're apologizing if we miss something, we're doing tshuva, oh, you know what? It's written in the Gemara Akdasha that if a person, if you saw a Talmid Chacham that sinned at night, so don't remind him for his sins in the next morning. Why? Because for sure that he made one hour in Bodedut at night before he went to sleep, and he did it Bodedut and Tshuva. So his sins from yesterday night expired already, been atoned, been forgiven to him. So tomorrow morning don't remind him because he's a Baal Tshuva. So now a Talmid Chacham's definition is that he's doing tshuva every night. So maybe my wife, she's starting to start drinking only chalav Israel. I'll tell her. No more kinder bueno for her. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell her. Because tshuva I'm doing. A bad tshuva I am. A poor bad tshuva. What can I do? To be a Talmid Chacham, it's not my privilege. I'm too busy on teaching, I don't have the time to sit and learn all day long. At least I'm not Hasid Shote. When I see someone drowning in the sea, I'm jumping to save him. You know what, just for you to know, I saved five or six people in my lifetime from drowning in, in, in the sea or in swimming pools. So, I'm not a Hasid Shote. I'm jumping to the water. When I see people drowning, I'm jumping. And now, when there's no swimming pools and people are drowning in the streets, and people are drowning in the internet and in front of their huge screen TVs at their houses. So I'm jumping and I'm saving people from their sofas and from the horse racing and from the casinos and from the alcohol and from the drugs and the light drugs and, and whatever. I'm doing my job, trying to save as many souls as I can. At least I'm not Hasid Shoteh, I'm not a fool. If I cannot be Talit Chacham, at least I'm not going to be a fool. And the Muna project is a project that is, his arms are so wide and we're accepting everyone that wants to join us. And that's our will. The Muna project is a movement. It's an, an awakeness to the world of tshuva. And like the that Admor that I mentioned last week in one of my short clips that I gave on Facebook, I said that there was an Admor that said that the awakeness of tshuva is a big gift for the generation. But that Admor said, that Rebbe said, that he cannot understand why Hashem chose the secular people to receive that gift and not the frum people and not the religious ones. So, like, everyone needs to wake up. 
But what that we can see usually mostly is that people from dark places, from, from, from distance, they are the ones that are waking up. So maybe they feel the thirst a little bit more. Maybe they're a little bit more sensitive to the truth. I don't know how Hashem works on those things. But our project is a very wide project and our arms are open and and accepting everyone that feels related to this message and that wants to contribute and to give from his talents and from his abilities. We have friends that are only friends, not working in the company. Just friends that are helping us to edit the short clips and they're helping us to do so many things and, and sharing our posts with so many people and helping us to reach out to other people and to many, many souls. And without those people that are giving a hand, they're giving from their time, or from their talents, or organizing classes, or helping us, or, 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 or funding our certain projects, or whatever. If we wouldn't have those people, we wouldn't exist. It's not a one person's project. It's not a one man project. It's an Amuna project. It's for every person that God, faith, in the Creator in his heart wants to bring that light to as many people as he can, to his world, to his circles, to the people that are around him, to the one that he loves, to the ones that he wants to, to heal and to support and to build. And that's our will, that this message, the message of Hashem, message of Hashem will go and, and, and will get stronger and stronger. And I can see that it's already happening, both Hashem, and today, tonight, we're happy, it's Osh Chodesh, it's the first month, the first day of Elul, the month of Tshuva. I didn't plan it like that. You know I didn't plan it like that. Hashem wanted it to happen like that. And Hashem did it like that. that in the first day of the month of Tshuva, of this year, Anila Dodi Vedodili, the month of Elul, it means I'm reaching to Hashem, to the Creator, and the Creator is reaching out to me. So in that day, we're declaring on this Baruch Hashem happy and opening of the Amuna Center, the first one in the U.S., in New York, in Queens, and the Zat Hashem, many wonders and many other branches and fruits will come out from this place and thousands of souls, thirsty souls, will come and drink from the pure water of Torah and Emunah Hashem Ilbarach will help us all, that all of our prayers will be answered and will be accepted as soon as possible. Ba'agalah, Ubizman Kariv, and Omar, Amen. Thank you very much. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those hustles.